So the two through halls with seacocks which lead to the cockpit drains are are the same as the is the one leading to the galley sink drain which I'm in the process of replacing. Uh, they're the old Wilcox Crittenton seacocks with the tapered plug. However, these do appear to be in much better condition uh, than the one leading to the galley. Um, so I'm going to continue here to clean them up and I'm thinking I'm not going to replace these this year. I'm just going to recondition them. So after using solvent to get all the grease off, I'm going to give it a light wet sand there to get the corrosion off and smooth it a bit. And there is some pitting on these tapered plugs. I'm going to use a wire brush to get the rest of the corrosion off there. And then I'm going to slather some epoxy on them and use epoxy to fill the pits. So after the epoxy dries, it's back to wet sanding. And I'm just going to wet sand to get it reasonably smooth, at least smooth by eye. However, that's, that's not going to be good enough for, for the valves to actually seal. So to get, to get them fared correctly, what I'm going to do, and this was a recommendation from several people in the comments section, is to slather on some Permatex, which is a grinding compound. It's basically a very heavy-duty rubbing compound. So I'm going to slather some of that, dab some of that on the tapered plug, and then insert the plug back, basically reassemble the seacock. And then what I'm going to do is just open and close the valve about 50 or 100 times. And what that'll do is, with the Permatex in there, is it'll grind the two surfaces, the tapered pipe and plug together, so that they match each other perfectly. And that'll form a watertight seal. So finally, with the tapered plugs ground nice and smooth, we'll just slather some grease on and put the, uh, put the seacocks back together again. Well, since these seacocks go to the cockpit drains, we can actually test whether we have repaired them properly. Uh, by filling the cockpit up with some water and shutting off the valves. And if the valves are working, uh, no, none of the water should drain out from the cockpit with the, with the seacocks closed. So, head down the ladder and see how well we did here. There's one, and it is dry, not a drop of water. So let's go around the other side and have a look here. And same with the other one not a drop. So the valves are shutting off and now I just went back inside the boat and opened the valves and the water comes rushing through. Also of course check that none of the water was leaking into the boat and it wasn't. Um, so it looks like these these seacocks should be good for at least another year. So the technique I use to remove bungs a wooden plug is first to drill a hole and then to drive a self-tapping or wood screw in until it hits the screw underneath and then just keep tightening the screw and often that'll just pull the bung the uh, the, the, the action of the threads will just pull the bung right out uh, this time it didn't sometimes it doesn't work all the way this time the, the bung crumbled so I have to use uh, my carpenter's all to get the rest of it out and so once I get that cleared out, then I can remove the screws. Well, after taking about half the galley apart here, let's see if we can finally get this out. So I want to remove this fiddle just to re-varnish it. 
because um, the, the only way to really do a good job is to remove th remove the piece of wood and strip it and varnish it. Um, but I thought I had all the screws out. Uh, it's still resisting me. It looks like I have to take more furniture apart. So as is often the case, just to get this one piece out to varnish it, I end up dismantling a good part of the galley. And we got a pile of rubble here. Oh well, we'll varnish those pieces as well. So returning to our through hull replacement, uh, next step after removing the old through hull is to remove all the remaining sealant, which I'm guessing was 5200. And so I'm using a file uh, to get the big chunks out. And uh, then I'll move on to very heavy sandpaper, 50 grit sandpaper, uh, to clean all that out. After getting the hole sanded and, and cleaned up and smooth, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, fiberglass um, the inside of the hole and just where the mushroom flange was. And I'm going to use some fiberglass roving and West System epoxy. And I want to do this for two reasons. One is that this hull is cored. It's, it's cored with Arex, which means there's fiberglass and then a layer of Arex core and then another layer of fiberglass. And so I want to pre prevent the possibility of water possibly getting into the core. And the best way to do that with a hole going through the hull there is to put a laminate of fiberglass and epoxy and therefore create a, a watertight barrier. The other reason I want to fiberglass this is so that after it's uh, fiberglass and it's had a chance to cure is that I can sand this nice and smooth and it'll create a, a good surface for the new sealant that I'll use around the new through hull to adhere to and stick to and therefore create a watertight seal around the new through hull. So, drum roll, you're probably wondering what I'm going to use for a through hull in Seacock. And I decided I'm going to try composites. I'm going to go with the Marillon through hulls. The disadvantages I've heard of these through hulls is that people still have problems with the valve handles breaking off, especially if they're not rotated often enough. Uh, but one of the, the really big advantage of these through hulls is that they're completely immune to galvanic corrosion or electrolysis, uh, which is which is ultimately what, what killed the previous through hull. Uh, so I'm going to give it a try and see how it goes. So moving on to a completely different project, the Fatty Knees Dinghy, which similar to the nutshell pram I had previously, uses the so-called fire hose rub rail. Uh, which is heavy canvas over foam rubber and the foam rubber serves as a shock absorber. Um, and these, these rub rails work well and they also look nice. However, I find in areas where the dinghy tends to often bump into things, um, th after a while the canvas will get holes in it and the foam rubber will begin, uh, will begin poking through. Uh, there are two downsides, however, to these rub rails. One is, uh, they're difficult to find, just not many people sell them. And the second downside is they're rather expensive. If I recall when I built the nutshell pram, it was around $14 a foot for these canvas rails. So for an 8-foot eight, eight dinghy, you're going to need at least about 20 feet. And so that's going to cost you over $300 just in materials. But I found that you, you can repair the, the high wear places by putting some heavy-duty umbrella cloth over them. And that's, that's the square cloth I'm putting on here. And I, I fold over the edges uh, so as to form like a tabling or a hem. And then simply remove the screws holding the fire hose rail. 
in insert the umbrella cloth and then screw it back down and uh, you can get a reasonably nice snug cover over the rub rail and that'll that'll act as some extra abrasion there and protect the rail and increase its increase its life so just doing the last step here is once you get everything all in place then remove the screws one by one and put a little bit of sealant in there so the water doesn't get into the wooden uh, rub rail underneath. So now it's on to cleaning up the inside of the hull in preparation for installing the new through hull there. sanding off the fiberglass, the excess fiberglass cloth and mat on the inside here, getting that nice and smooth. And sand the fiberglass on the inside of the hole there nice and smooth. So one thing leads to another. Uh, in the course of this job, I discovered the tabbing, which is the fiberglass cloth that secures the bulkhead at the top of the screen to the hull, uh, has begun to break away from the hull. Um, so I'm going to re-fiberglass in the tabbing. So you can see some of the cloth there, and I just poured epoxy on it. And I got my roller, and uh, we'll, we'll re-secure that tabbing to the hull and re-secure the bulkhead. Thank you.